So yesterday I did some priming of uh, a number of skins. I needed the bottom two skins. There's the skin here and then there's a second longer skin that goes on the top. So I needed to prime those. So while I was at it, I decided to grab a couple of other skins that I thought would be easy to prime. This one is the, uh, goes on the top of each wing, and there's two of them. I did both of them. It goes on top of the wing walk. It's a pretty thick, it's a pretty thick, stiff skin. Uh, but this goes over the, uh, the trailing edge. It goes up over the wing walk. And then this is the bottom of the wing walk on the bottom of the wing. And then I did its pair. This is the right side. It goes on the bottom. And what I'm priming is the inside. It's what's gonna be inside the wing. What's gonna show on the outside, I'm leaving just bare aluminum for my painter to paint when I have the, the whole plane painted at the end of the project. Um, and then this long skin here is the, uh, is the top skin or the main skin for the bottom of the right wing. So just to give a little perspective, so to prep these appropriately, which means scrub them with simple green and a scotch bright pad, and then I use a chemical called pre-coat, which is a, a mild acidic, which is meant to prep the surface for uh, better paint adhesion. And then to let them dry while I prepped my paint, and my paint gun and my airlines and my PPE equipment. All that took about three and a half hours. So for anybody who's just debating whether they want to prime or not, there's a couple different ways to prime. I'm priming with the top shelf product, which is a AXO Noble. Uh, it's an aircraft grade uh, fluid resistant epoxy. This is the, uh, the product. And then it uses a um, curing solution. I kind of ripped the, with some tape I had. This currently, these two gallons together at Aircraft Spruce are $512. So it's a pricey option. I have also primed a couple of parts where I'm just using some self-etching primer. And uh, I did the... Uh, the trailing edge rib here because I didn't have the time and I didn't want to get out all the equipment. It was late at night. I was able to just prime it in my hanger. I just threw up a sheet of plastic and, uh, and I primed that. So it was dry for the next morning and I didn't have to, you know, be out in my yard at dark trying to paint um, because that other, the Axo Noble stuff that I just showed you, the picture of the gallons, is pretty nasty stuff. It's a, uh, you, you have to use full PPE when you paint with it uh, because it's, uh, it's got some very bad stuff in it. It's why the military loves it and it's a top shelf product, but you gotta be careful with it. But I just wanted to kind of give you guys an idea of the time involved if you add priming to your project. Now that was a good number of skin, but it adds, it adds build time. And you need the space and the equipment and all that. I have an earlier video that I did about priming where you'll see me in a Tyvek suit and a full forced air breathing. That's what I do when I'm using that Axo Noble product. So just so you're aware. The gold on here, now I have sort of a, Sling doesn't call it a slow build kit. It's like from Vans terminology. But I, I uh, none of my ribs or anything were alodyned. I alodyned all these myself. So, uh, again, that takes time, and that's another process, and I did a video on that. But uh, I, I'm just trying to kind of keep a track of how much time I spend on priming and alodining uh, because it's a big project decision, and I wanted to accurately know at the end of the project how many hours I added to my build doing this, uh, more out of curiosity than anything. But uh, I will share that information as I go with uh, my watchers. Thanks.